Hi everyone, welcome to Ra Online. I am Dr. Priyadarshini Shanmogam, Professor of Microbiology. And in today's lecture, we will be seeing about food poisoning with emphasis to Clostridium botulinum, which is one of the very toxic uh, organisms which are known in this world. And uh, the learning objectives for this session will be, we will be just looking at the morphology of this Clostridium botulinum, okay, its culture characteristics, how botulism develops, how do you diagnose it in the laboratory and a few important applications of this Botox toxin, okay, which is a toxin produced by this Clostridium botulinum. And uh, Clostridium botulinum is an anaerobic gram-positive bacillus which produces spores, okay. The genus is Clostridium. We know that many species of Clostridia are there. You have perfringens, Clostridium perfringens which causes gas gangrene, Clostridium tetani which causes tetanus. And then you have Clostridium difficile which causes antibiotic associated diarrhea and Clostridium botulinum which causes a disease which is a severe form of food poisoning called as botulism. Okay, the name of the organism is botulinum and the disease caused is botulism. Okay, and the name botulism is given from a term which means botulus. Okay, it means sausages. Okay, because they first diagnosed that this botulism developed after taking this poorly cooked sausages. Okay, so that is how the name stuck as botulism which is derived from the word botulus which means sausage. And this organism was first isolated from ham. Usually it is present in the environment. Okay, it is a saprophyte that means it grows on dead decaying organic matter. It can be present in the soil, hay, animal manure and in vegetables. Okay, so it is an anaerobic gram positive spore forming bacillus. Okay. And it is about 5 microns in length. So, it is much longer than usual, the usual pathogenic gram negative bacilli by 1 micron in thickness. So, it is quite a long and stout bacillus. It is not having any capsule, but it is having flagella which have a peritricate arrangement that means all around the bacterial body and it is so therefore, it is motile. And this organism produces spores which are subterminal that means a little bit away from the end. So, it is not at the end. But there is a gap here and then you have the spores developed. It is oval in shape and it is bulging meaning its diameter. So, this is the spore as you can see here and this is the diameter of the bacteria. This is the diameter of the spore. You can see that the spore diameter is much more than the bacterial body okay, or the bacillary body. So, it is subterminal oval bulging spores. This organism is a strict anaerobe meaning it can grow well only in the absence of oxygen and when you say strict anaerobe exposure to even small quantities of oxygen will prove to be lethal and the optimum temperature for its growth is 35 degrees centigrade okay almost close to the human body temperature it grows well on blood agar so this is a photo of uh, blood agar plate or egg yolk agar so it needs some kind of enriched media and the colonies you have to incubate it anaerobically and you get large colonies which are irregular. So, you can see here they are irregular, semi-transparent, okay, they are not fully opaque, okay, and the edges are fimbriate. So, the borders are also fimbriate. So, they are irregular with fimbriate borders and semi-transparent colonies. So, this is a characteristic colony of Clostridium botulinum. And regarding the classification of this bacteria, eight types of this Clostridium botulinum have been identified. How do you name them? as A, B, C1, C2, D, E, F, G. So, you have 8 types and these subtypes, see pharmacologically the toxins produced by all these subtypes has the same effect. But then where is the difference? Each subtype of this Clostridium produces a toxin which is slightly antigenically different. So, there is an immunological difference. Regarding the structure, no, there is a slight difference in the protein makeup of each one of the toxins. Based on the toxins, the Clostridium botulinum is classified into 8 types. Okay? All the toxins, however, pharmacologically have the same effect except the C2 toxin which has got an enterotoxin activity. All the other types of toxins have got a neurotoxic activity, it is a nerve toxin. And what we need to know is because they are immunologically different, each one of these subtypes no, that are producing toxins can be neutralized only by their homologous antiserum. So, this is something which we have to note cautiously. So, now we will take a few a look at the toxin produced by Clostridium botulinum. 
it is known as botox okay b o t o x botulism or botulinum toxin or botulism toxin and short form is btx this toxin is a very powerful exotoxin it is produced within the cell so it's intracellular and it is released only when the cell gets lysed autolyses and when the bacteria is alive this is not going to get secreted okay and uh, this is synthesized as a non toxin progenitor toxin it's known as a protoxin or a non toxic protoxin okay or a progenitor toxin then how it is getting activated it gets activated by trypsin or other proteolytic enzymes which are present in our body so that is how the toxin gets activated 